As we have already seen, the vast majority of gunfights occur at ranges of about 5 to 20 feet. Shooting techniques that have proven effective at this range should therefore be the foundation of all combat shooting training and should be regarded as the single most important life-saving skill for individuals armed with handguns. On the practice range, highly skilled shooters can successfully use two-handed aim-fire techniques to hit quickly and consistently at typical gunfight distances. However, in the stress of a gunfight against targets that are shooting back, even highly skilled shooters are often overcome by instinctive reactions and revert to unsighted point firing. Since point shooting is the natural tendency in a real gunfight, it should be the rule in realistic combat shooting training. Additionally, we must remember that most gunfights occur during the hours of darkness in lighting conditions which make sighted shots difficult, if not impossible. Even if you do succeed in making a sighted shot in low light, the odds of making a second are slim once you've seen this. As with the body point method, a proper grip is critical to effective point shooting. Practice gripping the gun convulsively while ensuring that the bore is aligned with your forearm. The combination of a firm grip and correct alignment will enable you to point the gun accurately and consistently. Once you've established a correct grip, practice assuming the ready stance. From a natural position, take one step forward and flex your knees. Practice this movement until it becomes natural and balanced. The ready stance is a natural crouch with the gun arm extended downward at about a 45 degree angle and the wrist and elbow locked. Both eyes are open and, consistent with the body's natural reactions to stress, focused intently on the target. From this position, the arm is raised until the gun reaches the line of sight. During this movement, the wrist and elbow remain locked and the arm is raised from the shoulder with an action resembling a pump handle. The gun should stop immediately once it reaches the line of sight, but your focus should remain on the target, where it will naturally be in the stress of a gunfight. When the gun is properly gripped and the arm is raised to the line of vision, the pistol will naturally point where you are looking. As such, although point shooting is not sighted fire, it most certainly is aimed fire. Once you are comfortable with raising the gun properly to eye level, it's time to fire some rounds. Begin at relatively close range with single rounds. When the pistol reaches eye level, contract your entire hand tightly to fire. Don't worry about fine trigger control. The uniform contraction of the hand will keep the gun properly aligned and is consistent with the convulsive muscle contraction associated with extreme stress. The key to successful point shooting is maintaining a locked wrist and elbow and raising the pistol to the line of sight. One common mistake, especially in stressful situations, is to shove the pistol forward rather than raising it. Shoving the pistol causes the wrist to flex at full extension and the muzzle of the gun to dip downward. The degree to which this dip occurs varies from handgun to handgun and is determined primarily by the angle between the grip and the barrel. The closer this angle is to 90 degrees, the more the muzzle will dip. These diagrams show some popular pistol designs and their grip to barrel angles. Note that designs such as the German Luger and the Whitney Wolverine have grip to frame angles in excess of 115 degrees. Handguns of this type typically feel very comfortable in the hand and point very naturally. Designs with grip to frame angles closer to 90 degrees are more difficult to orient in the hand and tend to dip drastically if shoved during firing. To demonstrate the effect grip angle has when shoving a handgun, we fitted a model 1911 45 automatic with a laser sight. Note how the laser dot, and consequently the point of impact, drops well below the intended target when the pistol is shoved. The shooter must then raise the pistol back up to bring it on target. This not only makes accurate shooting difficult, it wastes precious time in a gunfight. 
Here the frame of a Whitney Wolverine pistol has been fitted with a laser sight. Note that the greater grip angle of this design virtually eliminates muzzle dip, even when the pistol is shoved forcefully. The effects of shoving a pistol are even more apparent during actual firing. Even at close range, this SIG pistol dips significantly. In contrast, the muzzle of this Luger dips only slightly when shoved. Although choosing a handgun design which points well will increase your chances of hitting the target, raising your gun arm with the wrist and elbow locked remains the key to successful point shooting with any handgun. Remember the golden rule of point shooting, thou shalt not shove thy handgun. Once you've developed the ability to get single rounds on target, you should establish the habit of firing two quick rounds in succession. The idea of this tactic is not to try to group the shots closely, but to simply improve your chances of stopping the attack by hitting the target twice. The recoil of the handgun will disperse the shot somewhat, but with proper technique and a good convulsive grip, you should have no trouble keeping both hits squarely on target. One variation of point shooting is the original method developed by Fairburn and Sykes. This technique involved bringing the pistol up to chest level and pointing from the center of the body. This is more difficult to master and inherently less accurate than bringing the gun to eye level, therefore it is not recommended. Since point shooting does not utilize the weapon's sights, it is ideal for use with guns which have small sights or no sights at all, including most commonly carried pocket pistols. Here the excellent Seacamp 32 pocket pistol, a design which features no sights whatsoever, becomes a formidable weapon when utilized with point shooting technique. The greatest advantage of point shooting is that it allows the accurate delivery of fire in low light. In these conditions, even if you had time to look at your sights, you probably couldn't see them. To illustrate the effectiveness of point shooting in low light conditions, we taped the sights of this pistol and took a trip to the range at dusk. Although it may be difficult to see the shooter's technique, thanks to Hornady Vector ammunition, you can see the results. As darkness continued to fall, 